Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to start our work on games in general form and show how mixed strategies can be invalid. We should all be familiar with the prisoner's dilemma by now, but something I haven't told you before is that the values of these specific numbers are irrelevant. Game theory only cares about the order of preferences, so we can actually solve for a general class of games by removing these specific payoffs and using something called exogenous variables instead. And that's what I've done here, is A, B, C, and D are all exogenous variables. And note in the bottom left corner that I've indicated each player's preferences over the outcomes. Thus, we're solving for any game that matches this form. Despite how the matrix looks different, we're still going to solve the game just like we would with any other game, starting by checking for dominated strategies. Let's start with player 1. If player 2 cooperates, then player 1 will want to defect, as A is greater than B. We know that because it says so right there. Now we look at what happens when player 2 defects. Here, player 1 will still want to defect, as he prefers C to D. So, in equilibrium, player 1 defects. And we can do the same thing for player 2. If player 1 cooperates, player 2 will want to defect because A is better than B. And if player 1 defects, player 2 is still going to want to defect, as C is better than D. And just like that, we've shown that for all forms of this game, the only sensible equilibrium is going to be mutual defection. But let's just make sure that there isn't some sort of mixed strategy Nash equilibrium here as well. So to do that, we need to find the mixed strategy algorithm. And we start by defining what the utility of cooperating for player 2 is as a function of some mixed strategy of player 1's. Well, some percentage of the time, player 2 gets B, and the rest of the time, she gets D. And I've noted that here mathematically in the last bullet point. Now we ask ourselves what player 2's utility is for defecting as a function of some mixed strategy of player 1's. That same mixed strategy is the one in the last slide. And we see here that some percentage of the time she will get A, and the rest of the time that she'll get C. And that's all we need to set up our equations. Remember, a mixed strategy is supposed to make your opponent indifferent between his peer strategies. So the utility of playing each of those strategies must be equal to the other. Here, player 2 must get the same for cooperating as she would for defecting. And from the previous two slides, we know what the payoff of each of those is as a function of some mixed strategy sigma. Now it's just a matter of solving for that sigma. We begin by using substitution to isolate sigma. A lot of people get tripped up here because they see five different variables, sigma, a, b, c, and d. But remember that a, b, c, and d are exogenous variables given, uh, given to us ahead of time. We aren't actually solving for them. They're just regular numbers with the rule that a is greater than b is greater than c is greater than d. So let's solve for sigma. To do that, we must distribute everything like that. And then we group all figures with sigma on one side and all those without sigma on the other. That is standard when you're trying to solve for an unknown. And that allows us to pull a sigma out of all the terms on the left. And we can finally solve for sigma by dividing b plus c minus a minus d from both sides. It would appear that we're done here, but we're not quite there yet. First, we need to prove that this is a mixed strategy that's valid, and we do that by checking on a couple of probability rules that I gave you last time. And to recall, we see that no events can occur with negative probability, and no events can occur with probability greater than 1. If our mixed strategy violates one of these rules, then we're going to have to throw it out. So first, the mixed strategy must be at least 0. It can't be negative. For a fraction to be greater than 0, the numerator and denominator must both be positive, or they, most, or they must both be negative. If one is negative and the other is positive, then the overall fraction is going to be negative, and thus our mixed strategy will be invalid. If you recall from the premise that c is greater than d, uh, and therefore the numerator has to be positive because the numerator is c minus d. So for this fraction to be greater than 0, the denominator must be greater than 0 as well. So now we test that. And we can rearrange these terms as such. And unfortunately, we can't really learn very much for this inequality, as there will be times when b plus c is greater than a plus d, and there will be times when it isn't. So if a mixed strategy does exist to this game, it will only exist when this inequality is true, when b plus c is greater than a plus d. And if that's not the case, then it is invalid. Now, assuming b plus c is greater than a plus d, we need to make sure that our mixed strategy is no greater than 1. So we set it less than or equal to 1. And we begin by multiplying both sides of the denominator. Notice that because we are assuming b plus c is greater than a plus d, the denominator will be positive, and therefore we do not have to flip the inequality as we would if the denominator were negative. And both sides of the equation contain a c minus d, so we can get rid of those. 
and that leaves us with a is less than or equal to b. And that definitely violates our rule that says that a must be greater than b. So we know that this mixed strategy is invalid. Thus, we have proven that there is no mixed strategy equilibrium to this game, and that defect defect is the unique solution to all prisoners' dilemmas. Next time, we'll try the same process with another game.